Hey, this is Todd from NC Solar Electric out here working hard. I want to show you some important things to consider when you're setting up power field power racks for your solar system. It's very important that everything be parallel on the same 25 degree slope. You can see how I tried to get them very parallel here because over here I didn't. And you can see that this first panel is not straight with the other ones um it's kind of off on the angle and the location it's off by about an inch and you can see it and also the tilt over there wasn't exactly perfect and it's uh it wasn't exactly parallel and it's popped up a bit between this rack and the next rack is low so over here i took more time to really lay it out right the way I did it is I used this string and I lined the string up all the way down, even with the top of the, the top of this uh, flange right here. So you see, I got that flange lined up all the way down. And also you have to look at the height. The bucket needs to be straight because the panel frame is straight. So I tried to level these out as best I could. This one needs a little tipping, so you just give it a little shove and you can straighten it out pretty good. Now the panel will flex a little bit. I'm not concerned with an eighth of an inch, but when it's an inch off, I had to level it. So to level it, I used a farmer's jack, the kind you used to get with the old car bumper jack. And I hooked the bumper jack under here, jack it up to the right height, and then filled in underneath with rocks. And that worked really well. So you see now I've got them all lined up. They're all even with the they're all even with the top of this flange and the bottom of the holes, all the way across. See, they're all even all the way across. And uh, this one's just off because I my it's tied. And then on the bottom side, you see I hooked it over this bottom lip here, and then I line up the bottom edge of the slot. This one's off a little bit still. I gotta move that forward a little bit. You can see it's also bulging the string out on the top. I might have shoved it back when I threw the block in there just now. <laughs> um, but see, I, I try to line them up even with that bottom slot all the way across, nice and square and straight. There's another one's off a little bit. So I just need to square them up a little bit before I put the panels on and then the panels will snap in very easily. Over here, I did the same thing wind knocks it off here so lined it up with the flange lined it up with the bottom of the slot go right down the line here it's lined up with the flange maybe a little low lined up with the flange bottom of the holes i tie it here because these three racks are for two panels and these three racks are for two panels and there's nothing really bridging here. So I wanna make sure those three are straight and these three are straight. And it's close to exactly the same as possible. Here, this one again is a little low. Somehow it was the middle one's a little low. And then this one, as you can see, it's a little tipped to the outside here. And I can straighten out this to the bottom edge. Yes. I didn't do this one right. Ooh. Let's get this up here. There we go. Yeah, so if I line it up, you can see down the line it's pretty good. And if you stand way back, then you can see that they are pretty well lined up both racks the other update I got for you is I mounted my Hoy Miles HMS 2000 microinverter here on the back used a piece of railing bolted it to the back and hooked it up to just these two panels I still need to wire up those two panels and when the Sun came out the other day one of these panels was putting out 453 watts and it's a 405 watt rated panel. 
And between the two of them and the microinverter, I was getting 900 watts AC out of two panels whose STC rating would be 805 watts. That's amazing. Not amazing what you can get for a little temperature difference. So I learned that in places where it gets cold, you want a bigger inverter because your panels can put out up to 20% more depending on the temperature. So if you get a sunny cold day, you want an inverter that can put out more than what the panel's rated for, not less. So you don't have any clipping. So that's why I got here. The HMS 2000 can put out 480 watts per, 475 watts per panel. And I only got 405 watt panels hooked to them and I'm putting 450 out. It's great. Anyway, don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out my store, ncsolarelectric.square.site. And I'll be getting back to you once I get all these panels hooked up.